Okay, uh, this this is Patrick Vanderhut again from uh, Tableau Software, and I think we'll go ahead and get get going. Um, so this morning we have I'm pleased to to, to present uh, Roddy Zakovic, who's joining us. Uh, Roddy's a Tableau ambassador in our community, and has offered to do a presentation today about dates and using dates and date functions uh, with Tableau. And uh, this presentation is being recorded, so it can be watched later for your use. And uh, I believe Roddy has uh, some sample um, some sample uh, workbooks that have been posted at the Tableau Public as well, or or will be later today. So uh, so I'll let him get going with the. Uh, without further ado, here you go. Here, Roddy. Hey, thanks, Patrick. Uh, I just want to start out by saying uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending. This is my uh, first Think Data Thursday slash presentation, so bear with me if I go a little fast. I'll uh, be sure to follow up with everybody afterwards uh, if needed. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to put this together. I do a lot of work on the forums um, and helping people out, and I noticed that uh, we kind of come across the same type of questions a lot, and it usually revolves around dates um, and comparing different uh, periods of time to one another. So what I wanted to do with this was kind of put together a presentation that shows uh, some of those uh, basic types of um, comparisons and those calculations behind them, um, and then go through the different situations that you might face with your customer's requirements. Um, so what we're not going to be talking about in this uh, particular Think Data Thursday is scaffold data sets for handling start and end dates. So situations where you have one record per customer that has a start and end date in two different columns. Um, that can get pretty complex, and um, there's a lot of great resources online for that. So I would refer you to Joe Miko. Um, problem with that is that it can get complicated, and it can take an entire hour just to do that. So I've decided that uh, we won't be um, going over that. Additionally, we won't be going over Unix epic dates, uh, date time time functions, fiscal dates, um, though I will be posting a blog post here shortly about uh, how to do some of this with fiscal dates. And we won't be going over discrete versus continuous dates, uh, the blue versus green pills. Okay, so to go ahead and get started, uh, we're going to get back to the basics. There's a lot of things that I'm going to be going over has to do with these two main functions and understanding how they uh, work in Tableau. So <clears throat> when you drag a date onto the column shelf or onto the row shelf or into Canvas, and you set, uh, select the dropdown, you're usually going to get these different options. The two most important ones you can see here on the top is you're going to be your date parts. And what that's going to do is going to return the integer value for the specified date part that you choose. So if you have it on month, it's going to return whatever the month is. If you have, say, 15 years worth of data, it's going to return all of the data within that month. So if I were to show you here, you know, the data that I have here has three years. All of these three years is getting put into the date parts of the various months. So if I were to do Drag my value in, I can see what values are for all months over my time. Uh, now the second part is the date trunks. Now what this is going to do is going to truncate your specified date to the accuracy of the date part that you have selected. The biggest difference here is whatever the lowest level of cardinality that you're selecting. So if you choose month, it's going to retain every property higher up. So it's going to be that year plus that month, and then it's going to truncate the rest of the time period, so day, for example, down to whatever the beginning of that period is. So if I were to choose the month from the day trunk, it's going to return, let's say, 2015, January, and then the first day of the month. Um, now, you'll notice you know, on the date part section that I have an asterisk there. I'm going to go over that next. There's a difference between when you select a date part from the dropdown and when you create a date part function, like in Tableau as a calculated field. When you're using date part from the dropdown, Tableau isn't creating a new field. It's made, making a reference and almost a, a formatting change to that field. Um, and you can tell this by looking at the formatting of it. It gives you different options because it's retaining the properties of that date. Um, whereas if you use the date part function, it's becoming a new field that's integer that no longer has a reference to that original date. So no, so you're no longer allowed to show that as January, February, or long January, February. You can only show that as the integer value that it is. Um, this is the same also with custom dates, but it's a little bit different. So this is when you create a custom date from your um, date field. Um, that will return as an integer, but it still has a reference back to that original date field that it was created from. So you're able to do the same type of formatting on it as you would if you were just to drag your date 
onto the rows or columns shelf and then choose one of those date part options. All right, so now that we kind of have that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and get into um, some different date functions. Um, so a lot of the common ones we see online um, and on the forums, um, probably the biggest one of which is my data is stored as a string. Um, I like to use date parse a lot if I'm using extracts or if I'm using a data source that supports it. It's very flexible. Um, it can handle pretty much any type of format that your string might be in for your date. Um, <clears throat> There are some limitations on that, but for the most part, it clears it up. And I'll go over um, how to convert strings to dates if you don't have access to the date parse function. Um, the biggest thing about date parse is you have to follow the pattern that your actual string date is in. So if your pattern is you have a two-digit year, a two-digit month, and a two-digit day, then you need to make sure that your date parse function follows that same logic. Now, if you're not sure what pattern to use or what um, letters that you need to use to represent those values, um, you can go to the ICU user's guide, and I will have the um, link up for that attached, and that will give you everything you need. Um, not all of those uh, symbols are supported in Tableau, uh, but for the most part, the ones that you're going to be using are there, and we'll give you a good idea of which ones to use. And also, save yourself some headaches. If you're working with months, always use capital M, capital MM, -M, and not lowercase mm. -M. Um, it will work. Lowercase mm will work if you have a year within your string, um, but if you don't, Tableau can interpret that wrong because lowercase mm stands for minutes, and when it's parsing, it can parse down to uh, the second level from an epic date, uh, and you can run into this issue there. So just to be safe, always use capital M or capital mm or capital mmm, depending on what type of abbreviations you want to use. All right. <clears throat> so, you know, once you have that, the next thing we want to talk about is uh, Tableau has this great thing where you can, you know, drag a date onto your, you know, onto your column shelf. Let's say I want to set this as year, and then you can do this thing where you kind of drill down into lower periods, right? Um, sometimes this isn't, you know, you don't want that. You want it to be something different. So you actually want to give your user a parameter instead that allows them to select which date level they want to show, whether that's sales over years, months, quarters, weeks, etc. cetera. Um, so the first part of this that we need to do is we need to set up a parameter. Uh, and this parameter is going to be a list, and you're going to just basically you're just going to fill this list with all of the different uh, date parts that you want to be able to then to, uh, to drill down to. So if you want it to be year, quarter, this is really up to you and the customer requirements are. The thing to note about parameters, though, the actual value of the parameter has to be lowercase, and that's because Tableau is case sensitive when you're injecting parameters into the date parts or a date trunk or date part functions. Um, but you can display it as whatever you want. So as long as the value of it is lowercase and it says day, you can be the display as could be Barney's day. It doesn't matter what the display is. It's almost that's just, just metadata. It's just an alias. The actual value is what's getting injected into those functions. So kind of moving into that, the easiest way that I've found to do this is to simply just write a date trunk function and then just inject that parameter as the date part value. Um, and what this allows your customer to do, uh, this is what allows your uh, customer or your uh, employee to do, is take that parameter and then set the level that they want to drill into. Um, and generally what I would like to do is when I drag this on, it becomes a date field, and all date fields you need to set to some type of level. Um, even though this is a truncation already happening, you have to do it again on the columns or row shelf. Um, so generally what I would like to do is set it to whatever the lowest cardinality that I have. So if in my parameter list I have year, quarter, month, then I'll set it to date trunk month at the lowest level. Um, that way I'm always making sure that I have like the lowest period there, and I don't have to worry about things uh, getting out of whack. That being said, there are some caveats to using this method. And the biggest one is if you have sparse data or if you're missing dates. Um, so normally in Tableau, if we are let's say that we are working with dates, and let's say that we have some dates missing, right? <clears throat> so 
So it's going to go ahead and it's going to do this thing where it connects the line. Well, we don't want that. That's, you know, it's not good practice to show that because there's not, these values aren't zero, the, the values don't exist. Um, so one way that we would, you know, normally fix that is we would show missing values and we can either add a table calculation like index onto the detail shelf um, or we can go ahead and turn um, stack marks on, change it back to a line, and that will go ahead and get rid of, you know, that line from connecting. And that way that lets our users know like, hey, you know, our system's messed up something, we just don't have data for that period of time, so we're just going to show it as two separate, uh, basically, time periods. Um, so the issue you run into when, the issue you run into when you're working with this injectable uh, date parameter is if you have missing dates, because of the double truncation that's happening, if your truncation of your columns or row shelf of the actual calculated field is lower than what your parameter set to, if you follow those same steps, what you'll end up with is basically a scatter plot. Um, that's happening because of that truncation is happening at multiple levels. It ends up, Tableau ends up kind of freaking out and not knowing like how to handle that. Um, so that's something to be careful with. If you know that your data is sparse and that uh, you know, you're just missing dates altogether, um, I would refrain from using this method um, and maybe think about other ways that you can accomplish it or trying to go into your data source and trying to fill in those uh, missing values with dates and then just giving them um, no values and measures. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind if you have that situation, um, you know, to be aware of. Um, also, uh, this is in the documentation, but it's something that I realize not a lot of people know. Uh, day of year is actually an acceptable day part option. Um, so let's say for whatever reason you're like, oh, you know, I want to, You say, oh, you know, I want to be able to show like the first hundred days of the year. Maybe we have a contest going on for sales. Um, it's in you know first hundred days of the year. Um, then you can create a calculation using the date part of day of year. Basically, just says, hey, give me the date part day of year and say it's less than or equal to 100, and that'll limit your data set to only show you the first hundred days of the year. And then you can have that, you know, span whatever across uh, whatever your current year is or however you, know, you need to use it. Uh, that's really beneficial. We use it uh, for some contests at work um, that we do that's like the first like 30 days of the year, things like that. Um, and it kind of saves you some trouble having to do some date dips from like January 1st, things like that. All right, so now into the meat and potatoes. Uh, we're going to talk about the comparing dates. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we can do this. And uh, there's a lot of different um, requirements that we get from our customers uh, as far as like how they want to compare dates or what specific type of periods they want to compare. Um, so the first thing we need to do is figure out how relative your, your dates are to today. Um, most of the functions that I'm going to be showing off today use today, um, but they don't have to. Uh, let's say you're working with a data warehouse that always gets populated a day behind. Um, in that case, I would just create a function today minus one day and then use that in substitution for today for all of my um, comparison functions. Reason being is today is brought to you real level. There's no excess subqueries that get generated like they do with LODs. Um, so you're going to have a better performance with that, and it's a lot easier to maintain. Um, a lot of people want to jump right into using fixed level LODs to return the max date. Uh, that can be a performance hit, and sometimes it's not needed if your dates follow a pattern as far as when they're getting updated in your database. Um, well, let's say, for example, you're working with maybe old data, like you're doing something with Superstore or something like that, and you know what the end date is of that data set and it's not going to change, then you can just type out an explicit date in Tableau and use that instead. Um, <clears throat> so kind of the same thing, you know, you don't have to use an LOD if you know what the, you know, if you know what the last day is, you can just write it explicitly and then substitute that in uh, for today for these calculations as well. If, however, you're working with a data set that gets updated randomly. You don't know if your dates are going to be a week behind. You don't know if your dates are going to be a month behind. In that case, you're kind of stuck, and I would say go ahead and use the uh, fixed level uh, max date to return the max date of your data set, and then use that in substitution for today or the comparative time uh, calculations that we're going to be going over. Um, so that's kind of the first part. Um, note on this first one about the adjusting for today. 
Um, I used one day behind because I figured that was uh, pretty relative to a lot of people with data warehouses. But if it's a month behind or something like that, you just do the same thing, just date add month minus one today, and then just use that. <clears throat> All right, so the first one we're going to be talking about is static period comparison. Uh, so this is going to be, for example, let's say you're working with an executive dashboard or high-level dashboard, and your customer Customers, they want to be able to see, I want to see the current month to date, the last month to date, and the last year. And that's static. That never changes. They don't want to have a parameter to change it. They just want to see those three numbers constant. So this one's actually probably one of the easier ones. Um, the way that we do that is we just set up uh, basically just a calculation that's going to be used as a filter. Um, there, you can do this um, through measures, writing inline um, kind of inline, you know, if statements into some aggregations. Uh, I prefer using filters with dates. Um, that's just my preferred method. Um, but you can kind of use the same logic. Um, you can kind of use the same logic to inline in, inline aggregates uh, to produce, like, current month value, last month value, et cetera. Um, so to get into it, uh, going back to what I said about the date trunk, date trunk retains whatever the level that your date part is, plus everything else up higher in the hierarchy. So date trunk month date, if my date is today, March 24th, it's going to return 2000, you know, March 1st, 2016. So basically what I'm doing here is this first set of clauses, I'm saying give me any date that is at least one month less or equal to whatever this current date is. So this is going to return February and March. Um, and you can change that. Let's say your customer wants to see the current month, the last month, and the month before, then you can just say date add month minus two, and that will make sure that you return that period. And then for what we want to do next is we want to also be able to return last year and the current month. So same type of process. The only thing difference is, is that we subtract a year from today, from the date chunk of today. So the first two is going to give us our first two months, this month and the last month, and then the second line is going to give us this month last year. That's the first set of clauses. And then the second set of logic that we're going into, uh, something that I prefer, I noticed that a lot of uh, people on the forums ask for it, um, but it's something that can be removed if it doesn't fit your situation. Uh, it's essentially dealing with, let's say today is February 29th. It's the last day of the month. My users want to be able to, like when it's the last day of the month, my users want to be able to see the complete month for what I'm comparing it to. Or if today is, um, you know, April 30th, I want to be able to see all of March, including March 31st. So what this first clause right here says is today is the last day of the month, and we do that by truncating the day today to the monthly level, so this gets truncated to March 1st. We add a month, so this becomes April 1st, and then we subtract a day, so this becomes March 31st. And this is always going to work, so we can always find, okay, what is the last day of the current month? Of the month? And if today equals the last day in the current month, then that's true. Okay, so last day of the current month, give me the entire full month of the period that I'm comparing to up here. You know, if this is false, then what I do is I check to see if the day of the date is less than or equal to the day of the day. So obviously today is not the last day of the month, so what I want to do for these comparison periods is show all of my days that are less than or equal to today. So I want to see the 1st to the 24th of all of my comparative months. So and I can kind of show you that. In practice here, you can see that I'll actually add a, sometimes I'll add either to the I'm building out a dashboard or I'll add it to the tooltip or I'll actually do a min and max date and a string function to actually show, hey, we're showing this, you know, the 1st to the 23rd, you know, whatever it may be. I uh, didn't update this Excel sheet this morning or else that went to the 24th, so that's my fault, um, but I assure you it does work. All right, so the next one you might come across, too, is uh, you want to be able to see the month's date over time. Uh, we use this at uh, my office when we're looking at things like signups, and I'm kind of checking to see, okay, how are signups doing uh, month to date compared to month to date over our entire period of time or over the last year, however it may be. So we can kind of get a quick benchmark of if it's higher or lower than what our average is. It's almost a way of looking at it. And that basically just takes the same exact function as that was at the bottom of the last one, and you just separate that as its own individual calculation. So what you're able to do is you're able to drop month, 
onto your column shelf, value onto your row shelf, then put this onto your filter, and then you're able to see what your values are month to date over time. And that adjusts the same way if it's the last day of month, you basically just get the entire month's values. So, okay, well that's great, but really what my user wants to be able to do is select how much time or how many months behind they want to go. So they want to default it at three months, they want to see the current month plus the last three months, but they want to be able to go back further than that and they want to have control over that uh, ability. Um, so what we can do then is set up a parameter like we did before where we just make it an integer list or uh, integer range. Um, and we're going to do is control that the same way. So we can say, hey, show me all of my dates that are greater than or equal to today minus however many months back they want to go from the parameter. Um, so, you know, showing in this example, if they have three selected, it's going to show the current month plus the last three. If they show six, it's going to show the current month plus the last six. So I can... So, and then, you know, this is really beneficial because you can also, with this list, if you have requirements from your customer uh, where they only want to be able to see, like, certain types of periods back, like, they don't want a list of one through a hundred. They just want three, six, 12, 18 months. Um, then you can set it up that way as well, so you can kind of limit what they're able to do, uh, which is really beneficial. Um, also, going back to what we did before, we can also check the month to date uh, filter that we created before, and we can drag that in in case your users want to be able to have that double functionality, where they're seeing they're able to choose how many months back they want to look at, and they can control whether or not they want to see the month to date or if they want to see the full month. Um, also, this is just a personal preference, but I find it's really beneficial. Um, Tableau lets you add comments to your calculations and your fields. Um, it's really beneficial for me, especially when I'm working with data sources. Maybe I haven't looked at it in a couple months. I don't maybe don't remember all the functions. Uh, generally, what I'll do is I will kind of give a quick little comment description of what the function does, and then I'll actually write the function in the comment. Uh, that way, I don't have to open it up. I don't have to press uh, describe to remember what it is. I don't have to drag it into the canvas. I can just quickly look over it, see what the function is, and get an idea um, pretty quickly. <clears throat> also, naming your fields, like naming your calculations, what they do, is also very beneficial um, when you're going back later on. If you're making things in dashboards, you can change the titles of things, you can change the access titles. Um, so just naming your functions what they do is also really beneficial if you're handing your data source off to somebody else who may not be familiar with it, or just if you're coming back to it a month later, uh, you can get a quick idea of what your calculations are doing. So the next one that we see a lot, um, and I talk to people uh, in the forums, is they want to be able to compare the, the current period to some other period. Uh, the caveat to that is the customer wants to be able to choose whether or not they want to compare the current month to the last month, or if they want to compare the current week to 12 weeks ago. Um, so the way that we do that is uh, very similar to what we did before. Uh, we're just kind of combining the two. So we're combining the date level and the periods back. Um, so what we're doing is we're saying, hey, truncate my date down to whatever level that my customer is selecting from the parameter. I'm going to say that's going to be equal to whatever today is at that same date level. So if they select month, this ensures that I'm always going to show whatever the current month is. Um, and like we were talking about before, let's say your data is a day behind or a month behind, you would just substitute whatever that calculation is in for today. So you're always making sure that you have that correct period. Um, so this is checking and making sure that, hey, I'm always returning whatever the current uh, period is that is selected. Um, the second set of clauses is we're going to say, hey, we need to get our comparison period. We need to get whatever it is that they've selected to compare the current month to or the current week to. Um, so the difference here is we do the same type of thing where we truncate down to the date level that they selected. Um, but then what we do is we say, hey, okay, they want to see four weeks back. So we want to say, hey, go ahead, add four weeks and minus however many uh, periods back they selected. Um, so that's going to hit that. Now, the next thing we need to handle is the whole period to date part of it. Um, we don't have to worry about that so much in the month uh, because we always know that whatever my month to date is, is going to be my max date. If for whatever reason you have forecasts and uh, your date exceeds today, um, then you can add a second set of clauses onto this first one that basically just makes sure that you're only showing up to the current day. Um, in the level that you've selected. Right, so once you have the current 
period and you have the comparison period, you need to make sure that your comparison period doesn't ex include any dates that go past whatever today or whatever today in the current period is. Um, so this is the same thing we did before uh, as far as making sure that the, it's not the last day in the current month. Uh, the difference is that we're parameterizing it so that we're seeing if it's the last day in the current period. Uh, and it follows the same logic. The only difference is we're just substituting in the date level in here. So if it's month, it's going to check to say, hey, is today March 31st? Whereas if you have a quarter, you know, it's going to say, hey, this is the first quarter. It's going to say, hey, is it March 31st in the quarter? And if we were in Q2, it would say, hey, is it June 30th in the quarter? If it is, then show me the entire time within that quarter. If none of these qualify, you know, if you're not doing that, then it's going to do the same thing we did before, except it's going to say, hey, today my dates, you know, are going to be less than whatever the date trunk of today is, um, minus however many periods back. So if I have it selected as month, and I'm just going to take basically month minus four, and it's going to say, hey, give me all the dates that are less than that time period. And uh, what that allows us to do then is, And what that allows us to do then is your users can now select these different time periods that they want to do. So they want to see it by week, and they say they want to, you know, compare it to five weeks back, and then you can do that. And then you can just add in, you know, other values that you want. If you want to show, like, the difference from the previous period that you're comparing to, the percent difference, et cetera. Um, like I was talking about before, you don't have to use dates. You can follow the same logic and just write it in line using if statements into the aggregates. Um, there's various reasons you might want to do that in case you want to have a banner, you don't want to have this cross tab. Um, and it follows the same logic, you would just do it in line inside of the aggregation. So, more comparison day calcs. <clears throat> this is when you kind of start getting into more of the craziness of what your customers might want. Uh, so let's say, for example, your, your customer comes to you with a requirement, and they want to be able to compare the current year uh, to the previous year, and they want to have certain periods that they select on. Um, the biggest difference from the calculations of four is they don't want it to be, you know, they select month and they select day. But what they want is a drop down that says last three months, last six months, last year, et cetera, and they want it to look exactly like that. Um, so as you can see from the examples here, that's kind of what we're going to go over. Um, and the way that we do this is following the same logic as the one before. Um, um, so the biggest difference here is we have a parameter and it's set up with these values, LM, L, L3M, L6M, LY. Now that's going to be whatever your customers want. So if they wanted to say last month, last two months, explicitly written, if they wanted uh, shorter, it doesn't really matter. It's just these are represent the time periods that your customers want to look at. So same thing as before, what we're doing is we're checking to see the logics. So if the period is set to last month, then we're saying, hey, give me all the dates that are, all the months that are equal to or greater than my max month in my data set. And you use this here to show you that it can be substituted for today if your data is really old or you don't know when it's going to be updated, minus one. So using Superstore, that's going to be December. So I'm saying, hey, grab the current month plus November, minus one. And so if it's last three months, same thing. You're just basically going back further in time, further in time. Um, but if they have last year selected, since we're using month on the column shelf, we actually don't need to specify how much time. We're just basically saying, hey, if it, you know, period equals LY, that returns true. Uh, so we don't have to worry about these. We're just saying, hey, if this is last year, it returns true because we're going to show the full 12-month period. Um, so that's the first set of logic. So one of these has to pass for it to be true, and then it goes ahead and checks the second logic, which is basically just saying, hey, show me uh, this year plus the year before. And it's the same logic as before, just instead of using the month, day part, we're using year. Uh, and this is what's going to limit us to show only the current and the previous year. Um, so by doing that, you know, we can actually drag year onto the color and year onto the size shelf so that it's clearly seeing, like, hey, this is the current year that we're comparing, and then this is the previous year. And then we can see how these things compare, and then they can change you know, how they want. So if they want it to be last year, they get the full, you know, two years that they're looking at for this time period, whereas if they only want to do like a few months, they can do that, and they have full control over that. Um, 
So that's kind of what we're going over here. Um, so that's great. Customer loves it, but they're like, hey, hey, you know, you showed me that one other dashboard that had, you know, the ability to where I could select, you know, if I wanted to see month or year. Uh, can you do that, the same thing on this dashboard? And you're like, okay, uh, yeah, I can do that, no problem. So as you can tell from these two images, um, on this one they have month selected, we see 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. On this one they have week and we're seeing the week numbers. So they can get the same type of graph, but they're able to choose what type of date level they want to compare on. Um, so they want to compare on. So <clears throat> the biggest difference here that we're going to do is Sorry about that. Make sure I bring it. Okay, yeah. So this is the same function as before. The biggest difference is instead of explicitly writing out uh, a month date part on the function, we're going to do what we did before and basically just substitute that with a date part with our parameter. And it's going to follow the exact same logic as before. Um, we're just actually giving the user the ability to say, hey, show me it, you know, the last month by month or show me the last three months uh, by weeks. Um, and obviously, you might, you know, you probably change this to, you know, last period, last three periods, uh, whatever the naming convention that you decide. Um, but it's the exact same function. We're just parameterizing it to give our uh, users the ability to select, hey, you know, I want to see the last six months or I want to see, you know, the last six weeks. Um, and we'll follow that same logic. So then, you know, your user, they love it. It's great. But then they get to this and they're like, hey, I'm an executive. I don't have time to figure out what seven means when I have months selected. Now, we know as data analysts, well, that means July, and we're like, well, we don't understand. But they said, well, we won't. what we really want is when we select month, we want to be able to see January, February, March, April, May, June, July, et cetera. And when we select week, we want to be able to see, you know, week one, week two, week three. And then when we select day, we want to be able to see whatever day of the year it is. So you say, okay, well, now it gets a little bit trickier because, you know, how are you going to, how are you going to do that? How are you going to, uh, you know, transform this into a name uh, to the name of the month, uh, but still keep the logical order of dates? Because Tableau is going to try to default that uh, alphanumerically. Um, so, you know, April and August would be your first two months, but that doesn't make any sense. Um, so what you do here, I'm just kind of showing you. So what we do here is we just add more logic to a naming convention uh, to a calculation that we're going to use on the columns or row shelf. Um, so what we do is we check to say, hey, um, is the date level equal to month? If it is, then what I want to do is I want to return the date name month of order date. Um, the reason that we use date name um, and nothing else, you know, as opposed to other ways of doing this is because this will actually keep the logical order of what your dates fall into. Um, so, you know, looking at the one before, you can actually see this says July, August, September, October, November, December. Um, using other methods where you're trying to do if statements and, you know, if else statements and actually explicitly writing out, you know, if one, then January, uh, you can run into sorting issues. Um, so by using date name and then month, we actually kind of release that issue. Um, <clears throat> so the second step, you want to say, well, if the date level equals week, then we kind of do that same thing, but uh, Tableau will default uh, date name, week of whatever your date is to actually say 51, 52, 53. You won't say, you know, week one, two, three, four. Um, so all we're doing here is changing it, is adding this whole week here so we can say, hey, when they have week selected, show me week one, show me week two, et cetera. If both of these don't qualify, however, what we do is we just say, hey, return a string of the date level selected. Um, and then we need to return a string because these two up here are strings as well, and we don't want to have to get into a type issue. So I'll apply where to. And as we can see here, when I select month, I get to see my months. And if I wanted to go, let's say, the full time year, I see January, February, et cetera. And if I drop it down to week, I get to see week one, week two, week three, week four, et cetera, and that's going to maintain the logical order. Um, and then 
Do you want to say, hey, show me, you know, day? We'll show you what the days of the actual year are. And then I like to use this. Um, you can eliminate this in the calculation if you want to handle leap years. Um, but I usually uh, leave it in there and show, like, hey, you know, this year had one extra day. Uh, but it kind of gives you that, you know, that be able to, like, show them that conditional um, axis um, while still maintaining the logical order of the dates that you have. All right, so that's kind of uh, the high level, a lot of the high level uh, comparison uh, calculations that you can do. Um, there's a lot more and there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Like I was saying before, um, you can inject that logic into uh, calculated fields uh, for aggregates in line, um, if and else statements for aggregates. So if you want to like create a value uh, of measure that is current month, last month, et cetera, you would just take that same logic and instead of having it be a filter, you would just write it into the calculation itself. Uh, and then that way you can do like, you know, sum of current month minus sum of last month to give you the difference and you can kind of create a cross tab at the top of your dashboard for that. Um, another thing that we run into a lot um, on the forums is uh, formatting issues. Um, people want to format things a certain way. Uh, Tableau is actually really good at this. Um, and it comes a lot from Excel. A lot of the same formatting that you see in Excel uh, pretty much mirrors what we have in Tableau. Um, so, perfect. All right. So, let's say for whatever reason your dates that are extraordinary database and the way that they're coming in in Tableau looks like that. Um, but that's not the way you look at things at your company and that's not the way that your customer wants to see it. Um, instead, they want to, uh, you know, see it by day, uh, month, day, year, whatever. So Tableau gives you a lot of, you know, default options that you can already select to. Um, sometimes um, you run into a situation where this isn't actually what you want. Um, so what you would have to do is go down here towards those custom. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um, so this is pretty simple. This is going to be using the same ICU uh, user guide that we uh, talked about um, before, where we're actually sitting there and we're saying, hey, I want the date to be formatted in this way using uh, these values. So, for example, if I just wanted to show the year, I can just type year, 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 and it's going to show me the four-digit year. And then if I wanted it to be month, month, I can do zero, one. If I wanted to show it as the abbreviation, I can use three ones. If I want to show it as full date, I can use four ones. And then if I want to show it as day with a leading zero, I can do that. Or just do one D and just show at the same time on the same day. There's also capital M, which will show you whatever the day is in the current week. And that one's a little bit... Um, it took a while for me to understand um, why it's not the same, but if you just do one capital M, it'll show you whatever that day was in the current week of that time period. So same thing. Um, let's say you want to show year, 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 and you want to show the week. Um, then you can do week, week. will show you the one, one digit, but if you want to, to have a leading zero, you have to do four. Uh, the reason being is if you do three, it's going to show you the week number without leading zeros, and then it's going to show you the day of the week. So you can see that. So if you want to show <clears throat> as a week with leading zeros, you have to do that. Now, you could come across a situation where your customer wants to see it as 2016 week 01. Actually, explicitly says week. Um, so the way that we can do that, we don't actually have to create a calculated field or anything like that. Uh, we can just do it straight in the formatting, and we can either use it by um, using the escape and then type in what we want, or you can use parentheses, and it'll do the same thing. So now we have year, week, zero, one. And you know, you can uh, do that same up here. Let's say for whatever reason you know, they wanted it to be in this format, and you can kind of see how this follows the same one. So we actually, for a lot of these types of formatting, we don't act we don't have to create calculated fields. We don't have to convert our dates into string values. We just have to change what the uh, conditional formatting of it is that's going to be displayed. Um, 
Uh, there's also a couple other tricks that you can do in here too, like if you just type five Ds, you actually get the actual day of the month, or the day of the year and the day of the month. One day, same thing as weeks, we do one D, it's just going to show us the day without leading the zeros. Two days, two Ds will show us the day of the month with the leading zero. So it's going to give us the abbreviation. Four is going to give us the full. Five is going to show us the entire day. So there's different ways that you can play around with that um, and kind of get into things in more detail. Um, so we're actually going to go one more and kind of get into some more kind of craziness when it comes to, uh, you know, formatting dates and uh, formatting time in Tableau. Um, so it's going to, at the end of the day, dates are stored as numerical values uh, in the database. And it's generally from an epic date, and it's going to count, you know, by seconds or minutes or whatever it may be. Um, so if I were to go, so if I were to go in here and say, hey, go ahead, and I want to get the day part day of the year, and what I'm trying to find here is the last day of the month. So following the same thing that we did before, I'm basically saying, hey, take all of my dates and truncate it to show me whatever the last day of the month that it's in. And then what I can do is do a date part of day of the year from that date plus one, and I can actually show that. Yeah, let me go ahead and just clear this formatting out. So you can see here, it's going to say, hey, 32, 60, 91, and this is going to actually be your numerical values. Now, this is a number. This is an integer field. It's not a date. It doesn't have any date properties. It is strictly a numeric field. You can look at the formatting. You see, and you can change it to dollars, whatever. Um, so the thing to keep in mind, though, is, like I said before, at the end of the day, dates are stored as numerics. And so what we can do is we can do something like month, 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 and now we're actually showing those numerical values as what they are actually in months. Now, the thing to watch out about this, though, is you can run into issues with, um, with like things like leap year, for example, like if I were to take that off, you'll see that I get some additional time periods here. Uh, that's because it's trying to adjust uh, for leap years, and you're getting different time scales on the days that they're landing on. Um, I don't use this for anything, but it's just kind of one of those things to show you, so you can see. Hey, um, even if I'm working with um, integer fields, there are ways that I can show it as a date, or I can show it as a time if need be, uh, simply by doing some some math and uh, working with custom formatting. Um, so there's different use cases for that, uh, but it just goes to show you that it's something that you can do. Uh, also, just to go ahead and show you what I mean by the epic, if we actually were to do this, you can see that it's actually going from 1899 and it's counting the number of days since then. So we see 1900, January 31st. So this part matches what we're doing, and it's basically just filling in this from that time period uh, of Tableau's epic date. Um, this is how you can uh, – Jonathan Drummy has a really good blog post about showing um, time displays, or he goes a lot about this in a lot more detail about how to show, like, hour, hour, minute, minute, second, second. Um, so if you're interested in something like that and how we can use formatting in um, the epic date to uh, create those type of fields, then I uh, ask that you uh, go over and check out his blog on that. So the last bit I'm going to talk about is a little bit of a hack, um, and it's something that uh, I do because I'm kind of lazy. So if you're working with um, Tableau, uh, you might know that uh, the TWB file, the Tableau workbook, is actually just XML. And when you're building out calculations inside of Tableau, uh, what you're doing is actually writing to the XML file what those calculations mean. So as you can see here, like all of these calculations, they're just basically instructions telling Tableau, this is what I do, this is how you need to, um, this is how you need to construct me when you're building the query to send back to the data extract or to the database. Um, so the good news about that is, um, is that if you're like me, you can create a little text file, you can create a workbook that has all of the different types of calculations that you use for dates. And you can save it in this nice little text file here. And then what I will do is I will sit there and I'll create an alias date, which is ZG master date. And basically, all of these other calculations just work off of that master date. 
Uh, what this allows me to do is, let's say I'm going from a data source that my date field that I'm working with is called date, and then I go to another data source, uh, and the date field on that is called measure date. Um, then what I'll do is I'll just take that alias, that master date, and I'll just substitute whatever the date field that's in it with whatever the date field is in the current data source that I'm working, and then that'll cascade down and make all of my um, functions accurate. Um, so basically, <clears throat> what I do is I go ahead and copy this file that I create out of that, and then what I'll do is I'll actually go into a new TWB that I created. And if you come here, you see this connection alias is enabled. And then you have, this is going to be all of your, this is going to be all of your fields and your functions. And then you can actually just copy and paste those right into here. And then when you save that, when you save that, you can actually open up your Tableau workbook, and then they'll all be there, and it'll all work. Once you actually substitute uh, whatever the date field is in your master date. So if I were to go in here, let's say, you know, here I'm using order date, but let's say this was date, I would just replace this, whatever the name of the date field is, and then all those, you know, red exclamation points would go away. And now I've saved my time by not having to write all those calculations in every data source, and it's just as simple as copying and pasting. Um, I use that a lot. A little lazy. It's uh, not supported by Tableau, so do it at your own risk. Um, I haven't had any trouble with it, but bear in mind um, it's not supported, and it's definitely kind of a hack around. Um, so that actually is pretty much wrapping it up for me. I went a little bit quick on the thoughts. Um, if you have any more questions, if I went through this too fast, or if you have you know other ideas, um, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. You can ping me on there. You can direct message me. It's at Roddy Zakovich. Um, if you have a really difficult question um, regarding dates or, you know, LOD functions, anything like that, you can ping me on the forums. I'll be happy to help you out any time. Um, and if it's something a lot more complicated or something you need a lot more help with, feel free to email me anytime. It's just my first and last name at gmail.com. I'd be um, very happy to do a screen share with you or work through it with an email, and you can do uh, whatever you want. You know, if we have to go through it an hour to find you a solution, then, you know, that's what we'll do, and I'll be uh, plenty happy to do that with you. Um, Roddy, so that, was, I, that was amazing. <laughs> that that the hacking of the twib was a uh, was was a uh, a nice little ninja trick trick there at the end too. That, uh, that yeah, I'm really really lazy, and I won't go as far to say that I have a Python script that actually like automates all of that stuff for me whenever I create a new TWD. But <laughs> yeah, it saves time when you're working with a lot of data sources. So. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, let's see, there's a, one question we had was a, a way to review all the functions covered today. They solved a lot of problems. This, this came in from Rob. And I think, uh, are you going to have a location on, uh, on your blog uh, or uh, have this posted, a workbook posted on the Tableau Public someplace? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to uh, go, I'm actually going to just make um, some, you know, just last minute uh, updates to the comments. Um, on the different functions, post them to Tableau Public, and then I'm going to have a, a lot more detailed blog post coming in the next day or so. But I'll go over everything that I went through today and also get into other things like fiscal dates and how to adjust for those as well. Okay, and so we'll go ahead and have a link for to, to that that we'll put on the uh, the same location where people signed up for the Think Data Thursday in the forums. Uh, we'll go ahead and and uh, and do that uh, in the same location. Uh, also, this this presentation will be it has been recorded and it will be posted up to the YouTube site. Uh, I I you know urge people to rewatch uh, the videos and and use the specific sections that are helpful to them and maybe share them with other people. Um, dates are one of the most common. Uh, Date-related date functions, date-related calculations are, are probably the most common uh, sort of question that comes up in the forums. So this is a, a, a very helpful presentation to review, um, and uh, and uh, Roddy covered a, a ton of uh, excellent uh, content here in today's presentation. So we really thank him for that. Um, in fact, uh, I think Jeff here in the in the Q and A said uh, that he enjoyed it so much he'd like a second date. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that's great, and um, I think that's that's it. I don't see any uh, I don't see any other uh, outstanding questions that are that are still there. Um, oh, well, Kathy, you had a question. Let's see. Uh, we have we have questions on uh, WebEx. You can send them directly on Twitter, or you can put post it right now if you have one. Um, she had posted a question at eight forty seven just to know if we were taking questions. 
We'll give it a second here, see if she responds. Um, also, I just want to be able to note, um, I know we went through a lot, and uh, so, you know, I just want to iterate again. If there's something you didn't quite understand, you know, feel free to contact me anyway. I, um, I enjoy helping people a lot, and I get to learn a lot, you know, by helping too. So, you know, no matter what the question is, how complex it might be, please feel free to hit me up, and I will, you know, make time to sit down with you and we can work through it together. That's great. Um, Brad, hi, when doing TWIB mod, the field names can conflict with names already in your TWIB. So that's just kind of a warning. Be, you have to be conscious of, uh, of, of making sure that you're not editing or adding in a field name that, that, are, that uh, already exists. And in the example that you showed, um, I think your field names were complex enough that I wouldn't expect them to be duplicated, but, uh, but those can be an issue. And uh, Kathy has a question. Uh, just to clarify, we can use max date the same way we can use a parameter in a calculated field and not run into aggregation issues. So the so what I was using there, it's actually a fixed level uh, max date. So the curly brackets, and it's going to return whatever the max date is in your data set. Um, so if you're familiar with LODs, whenever you don't use the fix or if you don't declare uh, dimension in the dimension declaration, it's going to be global to whatever the max date is in your data set. That's great. And the other thing I was going to say is uh, 9.3, uh, Tableau 9.3 was, was released uh, last night. So that's available for download uh, in both server and desktop. And uh, with, with the 9.3 release comes uh, the, the union join, the long-awaited union join uh, without having to do custom SQL. And so uh, I'm currently seeking a presenter for next month to, to show us some uh, some union joins. I think I might have one, but if you're interested and you're on this call, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to, love to have a new presenter that hasn't presented before. Um, and with, with that, I think, Roddy, I think we're good. And, I, and again, thank you so much. Um, and I'll have this posted up in the video later today. Perfect. Uh, thank you again, Patrick, and uh, thank you everyone for attending. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's great.